River Navigation Section 1 Boat Selection is brought to you by Sailing2Can.org. Your guides will be Captain and Mate Farmer, experienced cruisers, plus Captain Farmer is a Coast Guard licensed master with sail and radar endorsements. Our current cruiser is a 29-foot by 10-foot Catalina Diesel Auxiliary Sailboat. We have over 50 years experience and Captain Farmer is a member of the Power Squadron Navigation Committee, rewriting navigation text used in teaching all marine navigation. Before you decide which cruising vessel is right for you, you need to answer these four questions. How many people? How long? What type? and what condition. Here's an example of a very small 19-foot cruiser that we made our first trips with. The first mate said she didn't like the engine noise, so we switched to a sailboat. We enjoyed racing and cruising this Catalina 25 for 23 years, both inland and offshore. The ad said sleep six, but even four had to be very close friends for week-long cruises out of Panama City, Florida. Trace One was our commercial 42-foot by 10-foot passenger vessel mostly for local trips. We did make two-day, 184-mile passenger trips as far as Chattanooga from Knoxville. Here's the layout of our sailing vessel Toucan with six usable berths, stove with oven, hot and cold water. She is a diesel auxiliary, and we will mostly motor on rivers and sail when possible and offshore. Toucan specifications include two water tanks, one holding tank, and one fuel tank, and we will supplement fuel and water with jerry cans when needed. She has an LP gas stove and oven for cooking. The 26 horsepower diesel uses about half a gallon per hour when cruising at five to six miles per hour. To determine your cruiser size, you need to know how many people will cruise with you for over two days at a time. Guests will bring too much stuff that you have to store somewhere. Are you planning to be a weekender or take extended cruises up to one year or more? Beyond a certain point, you're a liverboard and will need a boat that can provide a living on water home. We see a lot of express cruisers coming to Knoxville for UT home football games. They can go fast, but they burn a lot of fuel and are expensive to cruise. They're for transportation, but you could cruise with them. The traditional trawler is probably the best all-power cruising boat. They ride easily and burn less fuel below hull speed. There are many cruising trawlers on rivers and oceans. Look for a trawler association for more information on trawlers. We believe a sailboat is the best and most economical cruiser of all. Sailboats like Toucan have crossed oceans, and there are many permanent liverboard sailboat cruisers. Look at other YouTube channels on our website for ideas.
Our last question is probably the most difficult and is heavily influenced by personal choice. At our age, we chose a project boat that we could outfit the way we wanted her to match our cruising and sailing needs. Even brand new boats need added equipment and possibly some modification. Captain Farmer is a member of the Society of Naval Architects and Marine Engineers, but we still use an experienced marine surveyor. You may need a survey for insurance and it gives you what should be an unbiased evaluation of the boat's condition and its value. Once you purchase a boat, you have to get her to your home port. Since Toucan was a project boat that needed some TLC, we decided to have her transported to Knoxville. There is no one right cruising boat but here are some things to consider in making your selection. Make sure you cover the basics and consider you may want to go further or have more people aboard later. Refrigeration is possible with battery power but for air conditioning, you probably need a generator or shore power. AC at the dock is nice, but on the hook, you hopefully have good breezes. Make sure you have a properly programmed digital selective calling radio and adding receive only AIS is relatively inexpensive. Check your electric and manual bilge pumps and make sure they are functional. To be safe at night, you really need radar plus training on how to use it properly. Even then, you can't see partially submerged objects so you should slow down at night, especially inland. Make sure your anchoring system is correctly sized for your boat. Too small road might fail and too large will not provide enough shock absorption. Use your chart plotter to mark your anchor drop point so you can detect dragging when it occurs. LP gas is obviously flammable and can be explosive. The gauge is put in the system to help detect leaks. Burning LP gas or anything else can produce carbon monoxide, so be sure to install CO detectors. An automatic CO2 engine room fire extinguishing system is good insurance. If that's not possible, carry a portable CO2 extinguisher. Use a fire port so you don't have to open the engine compartment in case of a fire. Getting a free, unreported vessel safety check ensures you have the minimum equipment. VSC inspectors are knowledgeable and can offer improvement suggestions for you. Thank you for watching this video and search for others on river navigation. There's an index to our videos on our website at sailingtucan.org.